Yes YouTube, welcome back to another video and thanks for joining me. So in today's video we're going to be unboxing the Awaze Filter Smart 200 Thermo. Now we'll unbox this, I will show you how to set it up and we'll get it installed on my ADA 45P. So that's something that interests you, then make sure you stay tuned. Without further ado, let's get on with today's video. Let's get it unboxed. So we've got our unboxed, and it's quite a hefty filter. It's almost as big as the tank. So I was considering getting the 100 version of this, but I decided in the end that with plenty of tanks, bigger is probably better. Plus the main concern with that would be the flow. Now this does have an adjustable flow, which you can do here. Um, the other benefit of this filter as well is it does have the internal heater, which you can stick in the filter rather than having that ice or in your tank. So that's always a benefit. Now, this is my third Awaze filter. Now I've got the Thermo two, no, 350 on Discus tank. I've got the Filter Smart 60 currently on the ADA 45P, but the flow wasn't quite as strong on that and I wanted something to handle the waste a little bit better. We've had some algae blooms lately, so this is only gonna help. So, why don't we take the Filter Smart 60 off that tank, get the media in here, and let's start getting this set up. Okay, so granted you can't see my face, but let's get this done. So I've taken the 60 off the 45 piece of the tank we're gonna be adding this on to. So now we just need to add everything we need to in terms of media and obviously all the fixtures and fittings. So I'm just gonna undo this. So just be careful because obviously the heater is in there as you can see. So be careful you don't break that. So just place the lid down for the time being. Okay, so now the top is off. This is what's actually inside. So it looks a little bit like a sump. We've got two areas here we can pull out and we've just got sponges here. But I'm gonna fill this with the existing media we had out the um, 60 filter. And we'll add this some existing media that comes with this filter, which we'll add in as well. And I'll add a little bit of filter floss. So why don't we go and do that now? Okay, so I'm just gonna remove the sponges for the time being. We may use them a little bit later. Just gonna remove that. So now these are just areas to hold the heater, which we need to keep in there. I'm gonna keep these dividers in here, but I just wanna make sure that we use the majority of the space for biological media rather than just mechanical. So I've got the old filter here, so we've got some bags of media done inside there. And then we've also got a sponge that was on there. I wouldn't normally use this because it's generally to go around the pre-filter, but I'm gonna add it in there because it's cycled media at the end of the day, which will help the tank set off to a good start. So we'll fill that in there. I'm gonna pour the water in here because it's just gonna help cycle the tank eventually with all that waste and muck. It's just gonna help we're cycling this straight away. So I'm just gonna pour the media straight into this side. Okay, so that's all in pre-cycled media. Like I said, we've got two bags of biological media, so we'll check that in there. Oops. Now I'm just gonna try and use some of this sponge. Now we've got it for the heater side. We may as well, so I'm just gonna cut some off, like so. And then I'll put a hole 
there. So can we do that? Okay, so we've got a little space there. Oh, like a glove. That'll just act as a bit of mechanical filtration. And like I said, I want a bit more mechanical filtration in there. So this side will sort of be like a pre-filter, I suppose. I'm just using a bit of filter floss. But you can set up whichever way you want. Now this did come with, bioacti with um, activate carbon, but I'm not gonna add that in. And then we'll finally just use the sponge that we had with the filter and place that in. Now make sure you put that, the hole at the top because it just guides the filter in then. Okay, so that's pretty much the media done. So we just need to add the top back on and then we can start with the fixtures and fittings. Okay, so now it's time to assemble the intake and outtake. So you get two of these. So just one little tip, this here, if you turn it with a flat screwdriver, you can see max, can you see that on there? Max minimum, that controls the flow a little bit as well. So if you do have, want to control the flow, then that's how you do it. So we're going to make the outtake first. So just taking one of these, just going to screw one of those on there. Ready for when we add the K for the tubing. So outflow really is just going to be that. So I'm going to do that, but I'm also going to add this in to add a bit of flow. So it pushes the flow towards the surface, surface agitation, done. Okay, so this looks quite funny actually. That's the size of the tube that I need for this tank because it's quite small. So all I'm going to do is add it on here, like so. Okay, so just add that on there like that. Then we're gonna add this on that way around and put that on the bottom. If it'll go. Hang on. There you go, like so. And I'm gonna push that as far as I can go and then obviously we can adjust it then depending on the depth of the tank. But like I said, 45B tank isn't the biggest, quite a big filter of this tank, but should do us some good. Ooh, adding that on as well when we add the tube in. Like so. Right, so I've cut my length of tube in in half, so we should have enough because this is going a couple of shelves under where it's going to be. So we just need to attach this now to the intake and the outtake. So I've screwed those right up. Oops. And now right off. Add those on. So all we need to do is to squeeze these on. It does make it a little bit easier if you use some boiling water and put these in the boiling water first. It makes the tubes more pliable, but why do the easy way? Okay, like that. I see the pipe bending all over the place. So all you need to do then, if I can control the pipe in, is to screw this on here, tighten that up nice there. The last thing you want is tubing coming off, water spraying everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna add some water into the filter. Now you don't wanna run this dry, um, especially if you're gonna plug the heater in. So I've just taken some water out of the tank this is gonna be attached to. Now you can fill this up by using the hole where the heater's going to go. Now you wouldn't wanna add tap water in here, without, especially without dechlorinated, just for the fact that it's probably gonna kill off any of the beneficial bacteria that you've put in here. So the hard thing is knowing how much water, but I suppose we'll know when it overflows. Okay, so we've got it pretty much set up now. I haven't filled the tank right up yet, just in case that flow is really strong and it starts bellowing over the side. So, fingers crossed it doesn't do that, but we're gonna adjust the flow. So, I'll, if you wanna know a little bit more about this tank, I'll leave a link down in the description or go and check out my channel. There's plenty on this. We've had some algae issues, we've been tapping some snail problems. We're starting to get on top of it now. So, if you wanna see what's going on with that tank, then go and check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description. But, let's get this filter up and running.
Okay, so we've got the filter in. It's up and running, really, really happy with it. I had to make some slight alterations to the flow. So I turned the outtake towards the glass, trying to diffuse it a little bit, as well as I turned the two intake and outtakes, the flow down. So it's looking nice at the moment. I did take the water down slightly just initially because it's such a big change in the tank and I've seen the fish are swimming up towards the flow. And the last thing I want is to end up with the fish on the floor. So, I'm really happy with it so far. As always, I'll probably follow this up with a review in a month or so once I've had a chance to get used to this canister filter. But I'm a massive fan of the Waze filters in general anyway, so I can't see any reason why this would be any different. But I just want to say thanks for watching this video today. If you're not subscribed already, now is the perfect time to subscribe. There's plenty of things coming up, aquascaping, bioactive bills, new animals, setups, you name it, we've got it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. As always, those regular viewers, show me that support and love by dropping that thumbs up. Leave me a comment to show you if you're enjoying this sort of content and allows me to make more videos like these. But I think that's enough of me waffling on for today and I'll see you in the next one.